Welcome to DevOps 2.0, the ultimate JS delivery pipeline. This is a recording of a workshop we gave at the 2021 DevOps JS conference. For your convenience, we split the recording into nine parts. For all relevant links, timestamps, and more information, see the description box below. First of all, CICD. We have two abbreviations, but actually there are three concepts behind these two abbreviations. These three concepts are continuous integration, continuous delivery, and con continuous deployment. Keep in mind, uh, this is a very basic thing, but I see that people get it wrong quite often, that none of these three are a tool, so to say. So if somebody asks you, hey, if you're using continuous integration in your project, or what do you think about continuous delivery? Don't start talking about any tools. None of these are a tool. These are practices, approaches that all focus on creating an efficient and automated process for delivering software. Uh, as you can see in this nice graph here, these processes go a step further in this timeline of, of, of this life of code. And I'm about to tell you in this little pill of knowledge, how they do that. So first of all, what's continuous integration? To keep it short, when you hear continuous integration, you should be thinking about merging your changes back to the main branch as often as possible, continuously integrating your changes with the main line of code. When people are talking about continuous integration, there's uh, always in the back of our heads, when we are talking about this, there's always uh, automated tests. So. Whenever you integrate your code with the main line, there are automated tests running and making sure that nothing breaks and that everything is going to be fine when this code that you have just created or refactored, that when it goes to the main line, uh, nothing blows up. And what does continuous integration help with? It helps you avoid what's known as integration hell. If you haven't heard about it, imagine a situation where you work on a, on a feature, let's say for a month and a half, and then you're done and your manager says, well, okay, so you and uh, your two other developer friends, you guys are going to uh, integrate on Monday because on Thursday we're releasing. So from Monday to Thursday, there are three days and you have three days to integrate your code, make sure it plays nice with all the features uh, developed by other uh, developers in your team. And this can be very stressful. Things might go wrong. You haven't really tested your changes against uh, what other people in your project have done. So you have no idea how this is going to go. And continuous integration, so uh, automatic testing and uh, getting your changes integrated into the main line. Very often this helps you mitigate that and be much more uh, cal calm and less stressed. Now on to continuous delivery. Uh, you can think of continuous delivery as an extension of continuous integration. So uh, continuous integration is all about taking your code, building your application, te application testing it and getting these changes integrated into the mainline. What continuous delivery does is it extends mm, this automation to the release process. So everything gets built and gets ready to be, uh, to, for your app to be deployed with just a click of a button. And this click of a button, this human element, it's very important. And I'd say it's crucial to what continuous delivery is. The automation is introduced up to a point. So you still have uh, a control over when your application, your code gets released to production. It's not uh, that you don't have an opportunity to look over the logs or maybe to uh, manually test the app in, uh, on a staging environment. You still get a high degree of control when you're going to release your code to the hands of the users or, or customers. And then finally, the third of the, of the trio, Thres Ombres, is continuous deployment, which is again, takes this entire idea one step further. And what I mean by that is that the entire journey of code from developing, writing, anything you do manually to then automated tests, this, this has been automated in uh, 
the previous two instances, but continuous uh, deployment automates the deployment as well. So provided uh, your changes don't break anything, they pass all the automated tests that are defined in your project, uh, your application gets to production very, very quickly. So that's, that's the three uh, concepts behind the two abbreviations. And you might ask yourself, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to put so much uh, emphasis of this continuous aspect of these three concepts, right? And I think that there's this old wisdom that if you practice more, you get better. And it's been paraphrased uh, to fit the, uh, the IT world a little bit better. So if it hurts, do it more often. So things like releasing, integrating, testing, these things can uh, be, well, maybe not, they won't hurt you physically, but they might be problematic, they might be stressful, they might uh, might create some situations that you don't not are not sure how to handle. But if you if you do this more often, you will get a little bit better at uh, these processes each and every time. Just basically practice practice makes perfect. And now with this practice makes perfect approach, uh, there are benefits in that for you. Uh, first one uh, would be that there is less errors. The changes that you make are tested more often if you integrate uh, more often. And I think that you will all agree that it's much easier to fix bugs uh, that crop up after small changes instead of uh, creating huge changes and then trying to figure out uh, what actually went wrong. Uh, the second benefit is the aspect that I mentioned that uh, I think is very important with continuous integration. So there is less stress in that, no integration hell. You don't wait until the uh, last moment to integrate, integrate. And when you are integrating as you go, you get many opportunities to uh, automate mundane and error prone tasks. So you don't have to do them yourselves and worry that you are going to make any mistakes. Now, the third aspect, uh, the third benefit would be the constant feedback that you get. And this feedback is twofold because you're not only getting uh, feedback regarding the quality of the code that you yourself are writing, creating, maybe editing, but you are also getting constant feedback uh, from the users of your application. You're uh, also getting constant feedback from your customers. It's not that unusual to see that there's a lot of work and a lot of thought, a lot of passion even put into a develop into development of a project only to uh, then turn out that the project is full of features that nobody really wants. And why is that? It's often because uh, the devs are uh, guessing what the customers want uh, instead of um, getting that feedback loop going and finding out uh, what features their users or customers want. And the, this, uh, this has been proven a few times already, but I think that a report, a finding that made waves for the first time uh, with, that, uh, with that revelation that a lot of features uh, in, in software are hardly ever used was the 2010 Standish Group report. And if you go online if, and you research this, uh, this report a bit, it's been picked apart for the reason that uh, internal apps have been scrutinized, but and only a few internal apps have been uh, scrutinized. But still, I think that this should work on your imagination. 50% of features hardly ever used. Would you want your, uh, your project to, to get that stat? I, I, I really, uh, I, I wouldn't want mine to, to have 50% features that are hardly ever used. Uh, so remember about that, remember about these benefits, but when you introduce C uh, CI-CD, so this continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment, is it okay to call it today to, you know, just high five yourself and uh, be proud of yourself? Well, you can be proud of yourself because it's, it's not that very easy, but can you call it a day? I say, nope, uh, you cannot really that do that. Uh, remember that I, put emphasis on this continuous aspect of 
continuous integration, uh, deployment and delivery. Uh, and this word continuous, it should be ringing out in your ears as you go and as you look at your setup. And here are three pillars of a successful CI CD setup that keeps that, keeps that continuous approach and uh, keeps its spirit, so to say, going. So first of all, uh, your CI CD setup, it, uh, it should be transparent. So transparency is one of the three pillars. Uh, the process you introduce and the practices, they should be visible and clear to everyone. Everyone, everyone I'm sorry, should be using them. And there shouldn't really be anyone working on your project who's above the law, who's not adhering to the process. If you're going CI CD, if you, if you are uh, dedicated to get this thing done good, make sure that everyone understands it and uses it. Then the second pillar is inspection. Just don't set and forget. Uh, you should look at your setup continuously again, and you should make sure that everything that uh, was done uh, well because of the setup that you have is in place is amplified, is repeatable, and that everything that went wrong, any gaps that you might have in your process, that you fix them so that with the next release or next uh, integration, nothing uh, wrong happens. You don't repeat the same errors. And as you inspect the process, it's uh, so the pillars two and three are, are directly connected with continuous, constant inspection. You should constantly adapt uh, your setup and make the setup evolve to suit your needs a little bit better.